Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis and we are at episode number 74. And my name is Barbara. I can't believe we've made it this far. Yeah, it's a kind of a big one next episode, 75, you know. Are you going to send me a cake? I will. I will send you a small cupcake <laughs> with with uh, one candle. If we didn't live so far away from each other, we should celebrate, though. Genuinely. Pretty awesome. That's pretty huge. We thank everybody for listening yeah. to us. Hopefully we're getting better. Well, the race to the future is over. I really hope we did a really good job. <laughs> But we're actually recording this episode before the race for the future because Barb and I have a few days of NADL meetings before. So we thought we'd just kind of knock this out the weekend before the race. So be sure to check out our Facebook page for photos and updates from the triathlon. And a huge thanks to everyone who donated to the wonderful cause within our wonderful industry. The continued education and growth is the key to every lab success, and it's better if we all do it together. So you heard about our latest sponsor, Thank You Digital Dental, over the last couple of episodes. When we were recording at the FDLA last May, I decided to walk around the vendor room in between interviews. I happened across the booth for Digital Dental. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a big fan of full arch zirconia restorations. Why? 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 Because I don't know enough about them. I don't think the industry put enough research to do a full mouth. I think it's too harsh on opposings. I find them too heavy. They're not repairable. I just, I'm not a big fan of them. Okay. Well, that's at least you've got some, some reasons. I usually talk doctors out of them. But when I saw the material called Crystal Ultra, I was intrigued. A guy at the booth, his name was Rory Banwell, told me all about it, and we started talking about having Digital Dental on the podcast to talk about it. Yay. Good call there, Elvis. Thank you for walking around. Yeah. I was waiting for you to wake up, to get out of bed. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been Saturday morning. Probably. So a few months later... We were talking with the CEO of Digital Dental, Pete Vilhard, and Rory Banwell joined us. They came on to not only talk about Crystal Ultra, but how and why Digital Dental got started, and that they are the only U.S. manufacturer of milling machines, and so much more. So please join us for part one of our conversation with Pete and Rory from Digital Dental. Digital Dental is the only U.S.-based manufacturer of milling machines for our industry. In the dental industry, margins matter. Digital Dental mills are designed to hold tolerances and mill tight margins over an extended period of time, even in the harshest, most demanding production environments. These are not tabletop milling machines, and I will tell you I have about 12 of them, and it's true, the margins are amazing. With proper upkeep and maintenance, you can expect your digital dental mill to produce consistent margins for a decade or longer. In fact, over 95% of the digital dental mills placed into production since 2006 are still being used in high production labs today. Digital Dental offers a range of mills for the labs. These include high production zirconia workhorse mills, which we have at Night Dental, advanced FDA approved custom abutment milling centers, as well as Digital Dental's newest mill, the DM5XT wet mill. The DM5XT is an advanced five axis milling machine that features an industry leading 40 degree of V axis tilt to reach even the most complicated undercuts and a 2.3 kilowatt super spindle to power through the hardest, most advanced new materials such as the Crystal Ultra, Nano Ceramics, and Trilor fiber reinforced substructure material. To learn more about industrial grade milling with Digital Dental, go to www.digitaldental.com slash mills, or you can call me and I'll give them a, a recommendation, that's for sure. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. We want to welcome to the podcast today two gentlemen from a company called Digital Dental. We have the CEO of the company, Pete Vilhard, 
and Rory Banwell. Did I meet both of you at FDLA or just just you, Rory? Yeah, that was me. I was running the booth there. Yeah, you guys had quite the booth put out at FDLA. And we sat down and we spent the, the evening together at a large table. I don't think we ever had a chance to talk. <laughs> FDLA is a great meeting, so I'm so happy that you guys met. I have a little bit of an edge because I've got about 15 dental mills here, so I, I know they're a great company. know them very well. Well, we, we appreciate that, Barbara. We've always appreciated your business and uh, always always felt like Night Dental was a really good partner for us Thank as well. Thank you. Oh, I didn't know Thanks. that. This is how much we prepare. I had no idea that we <laughs> used that. <laughs> um, I tried to prepare and read over it, but I just was looking at the questions a little later and I was like, wow, when I looked at all the information you guys provided us and uh, I just wanted to make sure I tip my hat to you. You guys are amazing. So there you have it, Elvis. So have it, go for it. So we have Barb here, a true customer, talking about how great this stuff is. Why don't you guys want to jump in and tell us exactly what digital dental is? It's about the broadest term I've ever heard in this industry in a while. <laughs> yeah, th th this is Pete. I, I can do that for you, Elvis. Um, so, so digital dental is actually the combination of, of a few different companies. So Barb uh, and Knight Dental are one of our earlier customers, actually. And, uh, and what Digital Dental does, we make milling machines, again, creatively called the dental mill. And then we sell and distribute materials that those mills use to produce restorations, right? So the, the, the real genesis and roots of the business is in the machine side. The gentleman, Kim and Cameron Karpowitz, with whom Barbara oh, has yeah. a good relationship going way back. You know, Kim has been a sort of 30 to 40 year precision milling machine maker. So Kim has been involved with making all sorts of really cool milling machines, lots of aerospace machines. He made the machine that milled the first valve on the first uh, uh, artificial heart. He's done some really cool stuff. And in the mid 2000s, he and his son Cameron were looking at an industry where they could make a machine that wasn't really a one-time use, but could be repeatable. And, and they stumbled across the dental industry. I think some of the folks in their, their family were dentists. Uh, so they built a, a couple dental mills and actually went to a trade show and met a gentleman named Scott Atkin. And uh, Scott is a, and was a fairly progressive lab owner in Scottsdale, Arizona. And Scott was one of those guys, and I'm sure you've, you've seen this in lots of the labs that you've been involved with, where he had sort of a you know, I think every every type of milling machine that you could you could buy at the time. So every everything anybody made out of Europe, kind of anywhere, and uh, so instantly his eyes lit up when he saw the dent mill, mm -hmm. and, and they pretty <laughs> immediately formed a partnership. So so Scott had some pretty significant material expertise, Carpowitz had the milling expertise, and they brought that together to produce what really was sort of a zirconia machine really focused on labs that wanted to be industrial, high production uh, zirconia lab. Yeah, and, and that's for sure. sort of how they got started with, with Night Dental and others like that. And these are monster machines. I mean, they are, uh, they don't break down. I mean, they, they're very, very, very robust um, for us. You know, we do, um, you know, 25 at a time to 30 at a time. Um, we've got them in, you know, we're, we're milling every material possible out of them. And they've been extremely consistent. Yeah. And that that's really kind of the, the backbone of the way that the Carpoots has thought of building the mills. And there, there's sort of, you know, a few reasons why. Right. But it, it's not a tabletop mill. It's an industrial mill. It's big. It's heavy. And it is made to last for a very long time. So I was actually just in the shop the other day. And uh, serial number two came back. It had been running for 12 years, came back for a retrofit, and was going to go back out in the field. So um, we sort of designed them to be as indestructible as possible. 12 years? Yeah. Wow. I'm happy yeah. if I can go 12 weeks without a mill yeah. and some <laughs> sort of repair. <laughs> it was the very, yeah. the very second mill they ever built, uh, serial number two. That's outstanding. So what makes them so robust? Yep. I mean, what's different between your guys' mills compared to all the other ones that are out there? Yeah. So so first of all, we're the only manufacturer of mills in the U.S., right? And and it doesn't mean that any of the mills built in Europe or Asia or anywhere else are, aren't good. But what it means is that the folks that build them, they're right here. 
You can talk to them at any time if you have any problems, right? But what they really wanted to do is build a mill that they wouldn't have to spend a lot of time fixing, which means it's not spending a lot of time down Mm -hmm. in your operation. So it's a really heavy aluminum construction, right? It's built like a tank. And what's important about building a milling machine like a tank, and the ones that Knight has are primarily for zirconia. Hopefully, as we go forward, we can talk about some of the newer mills that we have as well. But but the goal is to reduce vibration. So vibration is the uh, is evil for a milling machine, right? Makes when sense. it vibrates, yep. everything loosens up. And then over time, you're not able to mill at the same level of margin, sort of the tightness of the margins that you can do originally. So they designed it so that it would always stay rigid, kind of control vibration. And, you know, worst case, you know, three, four, five years in, you might replace a spindle. We designed it in a modular way. So basically you're, you're able to take something out and put a new part in uh, with minimal instructions or downtime to the machine. So, you know, the night dental machines have been running for a very long time. It's not all the original components, right? Mm-hmm. But it is yep. the original machine and the original frame and, and fixing one like that is actually very inexpensive. I agree. Help our listeners and myself kind of understand. The spindle is the part that actually rotates the burrs yeah th- so think of it like a drill yeah that's the part that spins what the heck wow what was that that could have been any number of things was just that saying. a spindle drill that, that, that's what it's <laughs> like that. roy did you have a drill in your uh in your office there is that what that was <laughs> That's not what it sounded like over on this end of the country, but that we'll edit that out. That was funny. Oh, okay. <laughs> you guys have to appreciate my humor. I'm sorry. It's oh, just part it, of the podcast. It, it, and, and Barbara, I think we actually met once, by the way. Oh, yeah, we absolutely did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and in fact, I, I do I, recall. I, I enjoyed that meeting and I enjoyed actually seeing all the mills that Kim and uh, Cam had installed down there in your, your room. You got one yep. of the, the better setups for how you have them situated. That I've seen. Yes, well, thank you. I, I do recall very well. Don't boost your ego too much. It'll go straight to her head. Careful. <laughs> so the spindle on your guys' machines, how much life can you get out of them? So it, it depends on what you're milling, mm-hmm. right? So so we have uh, different versions of the machines, right? So, you know, we're, we don't actually, while we talk a lot about the machines, Elvis, what we really do, we really think of ourselves as producing programs, you know, sort of solutions for labs, right? So Zirconia is a major solution for us, right? And mainly it's labs that are higher production labs or have a ambition to be a higher production lab, right? It's not a tabletop mill. We don't try to compete with tabletop mills. But what we're trying to do is, is come up with a production system that allows you to be more efficient over time. So run the things 24-7, very little downtime, very tight margins, those sorts of things. So Zirconia is one of our systems. We have a system for in-lab custom abutment milling. That's all FDA approved. And then the most exciting thing that we do is we have a system for milling nanoceramic hybrids. So it's a material we call Crystal Ultra, where we uh, we have a nanoceramic material that we use for fixed dentures. And, uh, and, and it's really exciting. In fact, for, for us, it's the most exciting thing that we're doing. And I think it's one of the more unique things in the market. So we develop mills specifically for those programs. So for the Mm -hmm. ultra mill, because the material is so hard, that spindle might last three or four years before you replace it. Zirconia spindle might last five or six years, for example. But you guys have designed it that if you need to replace the spindle, I'm not going to tell you what mill I have, but we replaced a spindle on it once, and I swear the guy had half of the machine taken apart. Oh, yeah. To replace yeah. this part <laughs> that he knew we would have to replace at some point, and it didn't. It seemed dumb to me. It's like the heart in the body. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In our case, it's interesting. You wouldn't You wouldn't even need our, our guy there. We, we actually, look, we could send somebody out, but for the most part, we'll team viewer in. And uh, mm-hmm. the, the, the folks at your shop that are using the machines, uh, they normally can do the spindle replacement with, um, with just some oversight from our guys and some from instruction from our folks in California. Mm-hmm. So for the most part, it's sort of designed to be not just robust, but easy to, to repair. And, and there's a really simple reason why, right? So I, I mentioned that we're a, the only U.S.-based manufacturer, but we're also the only 
well, U.S.-based, again, manufacturer and distributor of material. So we, we want your mill running 24-7. What it, we want it running as much as it possibly can because we're partners in that, right? It's good for you. It's good for us. And, and we think about that like a partnership. And I, and I think, and I hope at least that, that Barb would attest to that, that that's kind of how we view mm-hmm. it. If you're up and running, we're up and running. Yep, that, I concur. That makes perfect sense. You talk about how robust the system is and how good they are and how long they last. But a lot of times people talk about speed. Does your machines mill zirconia faster than other machines? You know, it's funny when I ask our, our milling guys that question, they go, we, we can go as fast as you want, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, but there's a theoretical maximum where you get a really perfect finish. You don't break burrs. You don't have reworks on the materials, mm-hmm. right? And it all ties together. So that's why we think of it as a system. So we're sitting there talking to our customers and and we can run different routines. So if someone has an emphasis on speed and is okay not being quite as tight margin, fine, we, we can help with that. And if they want really tight margins on a repeatable basis, we can help with that. And for the most part, you know, our, our guy Cameron Karpowicz, which I always think is funny because he's our cam guy and his name is Cam. That is funny. But, uh, but the cam spent a, a lot of time on that problem. Yeah. And if I might add, coming from my perspective, Elvis, um, and listeners, the faster you go, I agree with Pete. It's like you, you know, you lose the integrity of the crown. So there's some laboratories that want to go faster. What I've learned and what I've asked for is let's go faster. And I learned that the anatomy doesn't look as good. You don't get your secondary anatomy. You've got to use different burrs. So, you know, I've gone slower and we have a better result. So we can talk about speed all day long, but I think it's the measure of the laboratory itself and what the clients will or won't accept as to how fast you want to go with these mills. I prefer to slow it down after learning that lesson the hard way. I tried to do more at at the expense of the margins and the anatomy, and um, we've slowed it down a little bit. And, you know, you get your secondary anatomy, your tertiary anatomy, your margins are right on. So I guess it just depends on your curve of the dentist and, and what they expect from your laboratory. Yeah, and I, and I would say the other thing, not to interrupt, Barbara, but the other thing that we really think about is you want the same crown every single time. I mean, I, every time. I know they're custom yep. for each patient, but but you want the same basic criteria. So what we've tried to do, again, with that rigid construction and everything, is the day you bring your dent bill home, we want it to mill two, three, four, five, six, ten years later exactly the same. And what that does is it allows you to have a predictable production flow, right? And and that's the key. Like we're, again, you know, we're we're not, we're not making toys. We're making real industrial machines that are meant for that. Yep. I agree. Are most of the ones you do single puck or are you guys making, everyone's making multi-disc changers now. Are you guys into that playing field? Yes. Our zirconia machines, we have what we call the dent mill four, which has a two puck holder. So it has two pucks and then a five axis machine that has one puck. We, we, we have not built a tool changer in part because the labs for the most part that we work with haven't, de- well, one, they, one, they haven't demanded it and two, the demand that they really have is for uptime. And, and we've not yep. felt confident that the designs of the of those puck changers allow them to have the sort of 24-7 industrial strength that we want. And we think that, you know, the tools are going to break long before you run through all the pucks. And, and it just hasn't quite fit with the model for us or, or for our customers. And, you know, we've explored it and we've looked at it. We frankly haven't had a huge amount of demand for it within our customer base. Yeah. But again, part of it is because we just don't view them as consistent as we is. We like to build things. Roy, are you there? Sure am. Hey, can we change gears just for a minute? So um, usually we talk about kind of like how you guys all got into the industry, you know, what your background is, how you got into dental. Um, can you give us a little bit of an overview on how you met Pete, what you do for the company, how you got into the industry, what your background is? <gasps> that was one breath. <laughs> Go for it. Absolutely. So I've been in the industry about a year and a half now, and I am relatively new to it. I actually started working for Digital Dental before I graduated college. So I'm a, a relatively recent college grad. And then as soon as I graduated, I've been working full time for Digital Dental ever since. 
And I started in uh, kind of a sales, well, I've always been in sales in some capacity or another, but I've moved around in terms of my role in the company and I'm currently uh, the product specialist for Crystal Ultra. So Pete mentioned that earlier, it's our nano ceramic material that's used predominantly for full arch hybrids. And yep. I kind of, what happened was I was, I was a sales rep selling the whole, the whole line of products, but I kind of had a, a specific interest in Crystal Ultra and the customers that I was talking to tended to agree with me. And so they moved me into basically a, a specific role centered around Crystal Ultra. And, uh, and then we have other sales reps that, that handle more of the machines and the zirconia and stuff like that. So that's a great segue into talking a little bit about the material itself. Can you kind of go over what are laboratories using it for? You said hybrids, but are, do they use it for temporaries? Do they use it for long term, short term? Um, give us a little bit of an overview on that, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. So Crystal Ultra is a really interesting material. It's a nano ceramic material and is composed of 70 percent ceramic, 30 percent polymer. It's mm -hmm. four, 490 megapascals and it's a pre-sintered material. So what I mean by that is it doesn't go into the oven or it's not fired in any way. And that means that it's ready for finishing and delivery straight out of the mill. So it makes it quite versatile. You can use it for a bunch of different things. It can be used for any sort of same day restoration or something that you want a quick turnaround on. Uh, but yep. the the most common use for it in our lab and in our partner labs is for the full arch hybrids. And that's a crystal ultra overlay. The teeth are made from crystal ultra. And then the substructure is a trilore bar. Are you guys familiar with trilore? Yeah. Yeah. So can a doctor add on to that material direct? Yep. So any sort of light, light cured composite bonds very nicely to it. So it's a very workable material, which is something that Centered zirconia is is really not so that is something that that doctors are are happy with. You can adjust it chair side, you can reline it chair side, and uh, one of the most interesting things actually about having a hybrid made from Crystal Ultra and Trilor is that in the case of a implant failure, the the surgeon can actually place a new implant and then retrofit the the prosthesis to that new implant. So. That is something Bingo. that the doctors are very, yeah. very excited about and something that you really can't do with with the other types of hybrids. How would one do that? I mean, you just drill a new with hole a into the tri. That's it? <laughs> yeah. Yep. So Spray a little and grind a lot. Exactly. So since it comes out of the mill in its final state, yeah. you, can, you can basically put it back into the mill. Obviously, that wouldn't work, but... Uh, the same idea. You can you can drill back into it, drill a new hole, place a new implant, and you don't need to remake the entire prosthesis. Yeah, Elvis, it's pretty exciting for dentists when they fully understand yep. what they can do with this chair side, making adjustments, like you said, fixing an implant. I mean, things things that are not possible with some of the uh, more traditional ways of doing these restorations. So may I ask, do you market to the dentists or is it our um, laboratory responsibility to market to the dentist and let them know about these products or is yeah. it both of us? Yeah, so so this, so this is a really interesting question, Barbara. So uh, originally we started with Crystal Ultra marketing it mainly to labs and asking them to market to dentists. Uh, we, 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 have, we have shifted. In fact, it's one of the reasons why we have Roy and we're building out uh, the team of sort of our ultra experts is that, you know, we are more and more working with influential dental groups, particularly those doing a lot of all on fours to, to highlight the material, the uses of the material, those sorts of things, but, but all in concert with our lab partners, right? So we're, we're trying to bring our labs leads. Uh, we're trying to influence those, those doctors to, uh, to move this direction and then trying to provide tools to our labs to help them uh, do the same thing within their business portfolio because uh, it, it really is interesting when you go into a dentist and you show them the restoration and you, you talk about how it could improve or change their practice, uh, just how their eyes light up and, and, and what are yeah. it, it's pretty amazing. I would say it's eight to nine out of 10 
if I can get mm-hmm. it in, uh, in an all for specialist hands that they that they're interested in going this direction. If I was in that, their shoes and not having to replace a zirconia bridge and being able to directly add to the material and to be able to retrofit something if something fails, I mean, it's a win on so many levels. Plus, can't say that it's a heck of a lot lighter than any sort of <laughs> zirconia hybrid. I'm sure it doesn't weigh a pound, and that's got to make a difference for the patient and how they feel in their lives. It does, and, and the material is, um, the way the material works, it has a little bit of shock absorbency to it, and, and coupled mm-hmm. with the Tyler, just, just a tiny bit of flexibility, which which makes it really replicate kind of the natural structure of your mouth, right? So yeah. a lot less pressure on your ligaments, a lot fewer headaches, you know, the weight is a lot different. You know, we've always heard that the number one complaint about patients with zirconia arches, people we have two of them, is that their spouses don't want to eat dinner with them anymore because of the Can clacking. you imagine that? I and, know. And, and the clacking goes away with Crystal Ultra. So I think the dentists see all the benefits to their practice, but honestly, they I think they view it as better dentistry for their patients. And at the end of the day, that's, yep. that's really what they're all about. How is it on opposing dentition? Is it as rough as a zirconia is? No, it's really not. It's roughly the same hardness and the same weight as natural teeth. So it's going to be a lot more forgiving than than a zirconia arch against whatever the opposing is. It also opposes itself very nicely. But at the same time, it's significantly more durable than what you're going to get from denture teeth which the, with the traditional titanium bar hybrids. So we really see it kind of right in the middle. It's a lot more durable than the acrylic hybrid. It's not going to pick up the stains and the odors or have teeth pop off. But at the same time, it's not too hard where the zirconia doesn't absorb any shock. It has the clacking that was mentioned uh, when it's opposing itself. And so we see it as kind of a a nice middle ground between them and much closer to the the natural feel of, of teeth, which is really what we're going for at the end of the day. Sure. Where is that manufactured, if I might ask? Is that done? I mean, where, where, where do you get that done? Where do you get that made? Yeah, so we, um, we have an exclusive on the material, and we have actually the FDA approval under the, under the Crystal Ultra name, and we have a manufacturing partner. I was going to ask that. <laughs> yeah. Manufacturing partner in Europe who makes the material. Awesome. Yeah. And it's, um, we've been working with this material for almost a decade, and really, really in 2013, 2014, we, we started applying it to hybrids, which has just so, been so exciting for us because you know, you asked, I think, early, I don't know, Elvis, if it was you or Barbara, about single teeth. And, and it has amazing applications for sort of same-day dentistry because the one-on-one milling and those sorts of things. But but what we have found, and obviously we're a big seller of zirconia as well, that zirconia works really good for, for certain types of restorations like that. Uh, for a fixed hybrid, it it is so noticeably different. Honestly, if I put a, a Crystal Ultra hybrid in one hand and put a zirconia arch in your other hand, You'd be hard for us to ever feel like you should put a zirconia arch in someone's mouth again. Oh my God. Totally. I've held those in my hands and I thought to myself, how do you even, you know, do what you do as a patient with that sort of amount of weight on your arch, especially your lower? How do you talk? How do you eat? How do you do anything? It's just, um, how do you lift your head? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not trying to say anything inappropriate, but I mean, what, how do you do what you do with that kind of weight in your mouth? So it's, it's a win on, like I said, it's a win on so many levels. I just need to figure out how we get, you know, the market and the dentists and everything, you know, to, um, on board with it and figure out how you get the word out. I mean, as a laboratory, I know how we market, um, but for sure, I mean, the dentists need to know about all the materials that we're making. Do you guys do dentist shows? Yeah, we do. We set up booths at, um, at dentist shows and more and more we're doing things in support of our labs in the local market. So, you know, we may go to a uh, local you know market association meeting with them and lecture for them or lecture to some of their better, um, better clients, like yeah. you know, bring them in and help them like that. Uh, we'll, we'll also go out. I mean, one of the interesting things about the full arch market is, you know, it's not every dentist, right? It's uh, in, in the, not every dentist that are the ones that are most recognizable or influential in it. So we'll, we'll seek those folks out. We'll put the arch in their hand directly right. and talk about it. Because, you know, unlike almost every other sort of material company, you know, we're not going through big distribution. We're, we're, we're doing this direct. 
And we do it like that on purpose because we, we think there's a real educational part that's important to this. It's not just how the material works and can work for your patients and those sorts of things. But how as you as a lab, do you best design the production system? How do you make sure that you're, you're producing and designing the bars correctly, uh, understanding the parameters of the case to make sure that it's going to be successful? Like all of those things are important and, and we care about all of them. So we've taken our time and built up our database of use cases and worked out some kinks from the early days. And, uh, and we're really excited. I think over the next 12 to 18 months, you'll, you'll see from us a major, major push with this material because it, it should replace, I think it should replace every zirconia arch, but it should replace a lot of them. I like how you emphasized a major. That's uh, pretty cool. So, okay. So we look forward to that. I can't wait. So do they come in different shades or are they shaded after mill? Yeah, I can take that. So the the pucks come in pre-shaded discs and it's A1. A big thanks to Pete Billhard and Roy Banwell. Join us next week as we dive into more detail about Crystal Ultra. I'm just waiting for the next case that I can convince a doctor to try it. I really like the idea of a lighter and chairside repairable full arch solution. I think that solves so many issues. Be sure to head over to this episode show notes to learn more about digital dental and what they are doing for our industry. Now I'm going to give Elvis a plug here. We're going to mention a few events that Voices from the Bench will be at in the coming months. First is Elvis's first time speaking, dun, 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 and Supply Serona's Lab Marketing Summit, which is the 20th and the 21st of September in Charlotte, North Carolina. So he's never done any full live speaking where he can't edit. So it should be very interesting. Unfortunately, I can't make that meeting. I have another. Am I there? You're happy to come, but we're not recording. Okay. There's no place to set up. Okay. Then you can catch half of the voices from the bench, the other half, not the Barbara half, at the 8th Annual Whitmix Digital Forum, which is October 4th and 5th in Louisville, Kentucky, which I know you guys have heard about it the last two episodes because we've been talking about it. I will be at my uh, 50th birthday party with my girlfriends in Sonoma, California, Not having very much fun at all, so I'm sorry I get to miss that. And then the following weekend, we will be at our friends LMT at Lab Day East in Philadelphia on the 12th of October. Then, Jesus, say this all, (laughs) we will be at the Eastern Conference of Dental Laboratories November 8th and 9th in Concord, North Carolina. So we're really going to get out. We really like to do the live interviews. Elvis and I really enjoy our podcast, but we really like having people face-to-face. It's a lot of fun. Um, So please come up, check us out, sit down for an interview. We really look forward to meeting you. Check out VoicesFromTheBench.com for a complete list and come and see us. And I will grab you and I will pull you over to our podcast and sit you down and we can chat. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to get people to sit down and record with me when I'm by myself at the Whitmix Digital Forum. I'm going to have to... Find some nerve to get people to sit down. Yeah, you will. You'll be fine. Just pull pull them over just like I do and say, park it. Let's go. We're going to (laughs) talk. You know enough people now. You got it. But I'm going to miss you. I'm sorry that I'm not going to be there. We'll have to do it next year, too. Yes, we will. It's been a while since we've had any reviews on iTunes. If you're listening to us, hit us a couple stars and leave a review. We would appreciate it. Yes, we would. Oh, yes. And thank you for all your donations and thank you for all listening to us. We appreciate you. A big shout out to all our fans. Awesome. All right, everybody. That's all we got. We'll talk to you next week. Have a good week. See ya. Bye. And if not, sucks to be you.